MMORPGs are anything but. Now, MMO is kind of a word, or memorpica, which is an acronym, as opposed to MMORPG, which is an initialism, and you better not ever mess that up. But memorpicas are sort of a genre. When you think of MMO, what do you think of? You think of like World of Warcraft, EVE Online, you think of certain specific things. You expect these games to have stateful progression, to have, you know, a world where you go and maybe kill things, or somehow level up. There's all these expectations we have. Well, I'm going to argue that World of Warcraft in particular is not actually an MMORPG. Well, I mean, it is. If you take the word MMORPG to mean the genre of games like World of Warcraft, then yeah, it's in the same genre that, <laughs> that everybody calls MMORPG. But if you take, you know, if you actually break down the words, massive, multiplayer, online, role-playing game, it is none of those, or very few of them at now, least. Now, we have to pause. This is very important because we often <laughs> hate on stuff. <laughs> At conventions and in panels, we did a famous Beyond Dungeons and Dragons panel many times. So we are not going to say that World of Warcraft is a bad game. Well, I mean, we do believe that, but we're just not going to say it now. In so this panel. So don't argue with us about it now. Save it for when we make the. I mean, I'm not going to say that you're just leveling up and it's a time investment rather than a skill investment. I'm not going to say any of those things. I'm not arguing that it's a bad game. We would, just not today. I'm only arguing that it isn't what it says it is. That the word MMO is not really a useful term anymore. So massively multiplayer online role-playing game. We call this a genre, yet isn't it just a list of mechanics? I mean, we say things like first-person shooter, third-person platformer, RPG. We have everything we use to describe games is usually a list of mechanics that the games involve. Sometimes they're fundamental mechanics. But yet, if we really look at this, WoW is more of a massively parallel, multiplayer, graphical, proprietary, client server, stateful, character progressing space with instantiated, stateless, real-time action management gameplay and statically, interactive, linear world narrative. Doesn't quite roll off the top. So clearly we're not actually listing all the core mechanics of a game like this. We're just calling it an MMO and not really thinking about it. So what does massively multiplayer really mean? I mean, how massive does it have to be, right? If I get, you know, a whole, you know, if we add up everyone playing <laughs> Counter-Strike on all these separate servers, it adds up to tens of thousands. At any well, let's talk moment. about that. I mean, I'm a World of Warcraft and Dungeons Dragons Online, they're instantiated. They have instances. The world kind of shards off. So when you're going on a raid, you're in combat, you're doing all these sorts of things, you're kind of in your own universe, not really interacting with the whole world. You're interacting with everyone in that one raid. You could argue that most of World of Warcraft, while there's some gameplay in there, is kind of like a giant ready room for the raids. A giant chat room, you can walk around, you've got avatars and everything. What's interesting is that the first MMOs didn't have this. The Realm, the first graphical, massively multiplayer online role-playing game in the world, it predated uh, certain other games by a few months. It was put out by Sierra. It's still going. There's scary people in there. It was completely massive. If you walk around, Everywhere you go, if someone else is walking, you just run into them. No matter what you do, the whole world is present at the exact same time. It was pretty much exactly like a MUD. If anyone ever played a MUD, MUDs are truly massive. There's no instancing, there's no separating. Everyone can go anywhere as long as you don't die from some horrible monster or something, right? Now, of course, this led to problems. If I was on a quest, let's say, you'd see this conga line of a thousand people all walking in the same direction, getting the MacGuffin, walking all the way back. It really broke the illusion of the game, but it was truly massive. Now, meanwhile, World of Warcraft, or Dungeons and & Dragons and Online is actually a very good example of this. We were trying that game out because we hate most MMOs, but we have to play games before we can legitimately say we hate them. And I said, I'm in the main town. I'm in the town square. Meet me. And Scott says, all right, where are you? I don't see you. We argue for like 20 minutes on Skype. We look online. It turns out they're like four of the same city. And they're just called one, two, three, four, and you click on which one you want to go into. It's so parallel that there's like the massiveness is completely ruined. What about Borderlands? Borderlands is in many ways the same game as World of Warcraft. I mean, I've got a character, Scott's got a character. I level up independently of Scott. We join together and go on raids. Those levels are stateful when we come back out. When we're not on raids, we're hanging out in the shared space where we chat. I can take my character, join your game, we'll play a game now. All the core mechanics of my character progression are the same in Borderlands as they are in World of Warcraft. Yet no one calls this a massive game by any stretch. Yeah, the only thing that World of Warcraft has that Borderlands doesn't is the fact that when you're trying to get a game together, you know, trying to go on a raid or, or build a quest, right? For Borderlands, you have to call someone on Skype. Whereas World of Warcraft sort of has this chat room, which is the town, right? And you happen to have your avatar available to you in the chat room. And you've still got to call people on Skype because they never actually sign in. Right, right? of course. So... 
What about Tribes? Tribes was an FPS. You'd have 20 on 20, 30 on 30 games. You could have 40 on 40, 60 on 60. You got big. And also, we say massively multiplayer. Does that mean in terms of the number of players? Or does it mean in terms of the scale of the map? Tribes maps were massive. If you're trying to hoof it as a heavy to the enemy base, that's like a 10 minute run. That's why you gotta ski like a real man. <laughs> Scott brought up the example of Counter-Strike. To this day, the number one game on Steam is Counter-Strike Source. The number More two people game? are playing What's the number that. Two game? The number two game is Counter Strike One Six. <laughs> and they're pretty close. They both have about sixty to seventy thousand players at any given time. So is this not massive? I mean, they're just having all these individual servers, which are kind of like individual raids that get replayed over and over and over again. But you can go to the Steam lobby, you can talk to people, form a new game, go back and forth. But yet it doesn't have any of the statefulness. I don't level up by killing, you know, skags and skag gulch with my TNT. <laughs> What the fuck does online even mean? <laughs> I mean, Farmville is online. Farmville is massive. It has billions of players. Is that a massively multiplayer online game? Is anyone actually going to argue that it is? Or if it is, is that actually a meaningful term anymore? We also have to think about what kind of online that it is. For example, Minecraft is online. So is World of Warcraft. I can't just, unless I'm a dirty pirate, make my own World of Warcraft server and play on it, unless I'm a dirty pirate, you can actually do that. <laughs> but Minecraft, we for Geek Nights, actually one of our friends runs a server and we all hang out on it. If I control the server, that's a very different experience from if Valve or Blizzard or someone else controls the server. I mean, I can just make everybody level 100 or whatever level it is that you kids are shooting for these days. Yeah, I mean, and even though, it, you know, it's not necessary, you know, these games, Minecraft and WoW and such, right, the online play, you're actually interacting with other players in the same space, you know, the same game space when you're online, connected by the internet, right? But how about, oh, my favorite game of 2010, Pac-Man CEDX, right? You never actually play Pac-Man at the same time as anyone else. It's a single-player game, but there's a leaderboard with everyone's score online. So does that make it online, right? Is it now an online game, even though it doesn't even have multiplayer? It's just a single-player game? Role-playing game, a very contentious subject. Now, I mean, those are role-playing games by some definitions. That's a role-playing game. It's not really online. That's a role-playing game. At what point is World of Warcraft a role-playing game. Now, you are playing a role. I have my avatar. I walk around. I do my stuff. I'm playing this role. But, I mean, how many character decisions am I making that are mechanically backed up by the game, that yeah. are mechanically enforced? Yeah, I mean, plenty of people go to RP servers and they role-play, but none of that role-playing has anything to do with the game. They could do that exact same role-playing in a chat room. The only difference is that it happens to be a chat room where their avatar is above it. Well, no, I'm actually really doing World of Warcraft a disservice. World of Warcraft is more like that. <laughs> Because you are playing a role, but if I play a Tauren and Scott plays a Tauren and we go through all the stuff, we're both kind of playing the same story in parallel, and then we might bump into each other and do a raid, but I'm not enriching the world, I'm not changing anything in the world of Warcraft, I'm changing everything in my world of Warcraft. I'm the goddamn hero and you're all just in the background. You're not even there when I'm actually fighting the Lich King, unless you're in my guild. So role-playing... I mean, shouldn't a role-playing game be judged by what it actually mechanically brings to the table? I mean, what if you had an MMO, a, massively ga a massive game of some kind, that actually mechanically enforced role-playing? Say you become infamous and it does things to you that increase over time. You have stats, you have traits, you have, all, you have maybe, I don't know, verbal combat as opposed to sword combat. Some way to make role-playing intrinsic to the system. If it's not intrinsic to the system, I can't say that it's a role-playing game because I can play Monopoly and role-play the ever-living crap out of it. It doesn't make it a role-playing game. Oh, you evil bastard. You have taken Mediterranean. <laughs> I will have it from you. So it seems like what's going on here is that we're really confusing mechanics and genres in, this ga in games in general. MMOs are just one example. I mean, look at first-person shooters. For a long time, when someone said FPS, they meant Quake or Doom. No one thought of making a game, say, that just had melee combat, or a game like Minecraft, which is a first-person game. And, and there's shooting. There is shooting, but yet, would you call it a first-person shooter? TIE Fighter, it's first-person, and there's shooting. I can add shooting to, like, Gran Turismo and use the first-person driving camera, and it would be first-person with shooting. More importantly, this really messes up the game design world and the game industry. Because if you go to a company and say, I'm making an MMO, a massive game, they're just going to think, oh, he's making a World of Warcraft clone, and they're going to ignore you. Or they're going to think it's going to print money and you're going to fail, but they're really we're restricting ourselves with genres that are just mechanics, and we're constraining the kind of games that we make. 
Why don't we have truly massive games? Why do we have to tie all this baggage of stateful character progression, of leveling up, of the grind, of the guilds? What if we had a massive game that was just Star Wars, and you play the Battle of Yavin? That is the only game. And once a week, it happens. 10,000 people, every single TIE fighter, every single X-Wing, every, every single, single captain of ship. on the Death Star, somebody's shooting it, man. <laughs> And, there, and this is where I think the Star Wars Galaxies MMO had so many problems. They tried to make World of Warcraft set in a Star Wars universe. And they didn't really do a lot to differentiate it that worked. Because what do we care about in Star Wars? We want to be Luke Skywalker and save the day. Why can't we just have a game where everybody saves the day every time? It doesn't have to be stateful. We don't have to be leveling up. Let's just have these massive spaces and interact in them. Why don't we try world enrichment? What if in World of Warcraft, instead of just when you die, oh, I lose some crap or whatever, well, you know? Wait, do people understand like why this is right? So if you played Oregon Trail way back in the day, right, on an old Apple II, when you died, you got to type in you know, your message for your tombstone, and then anyone who took that floppy disk and played Oregon Trail on that same floppy from there on out. When they got to that point where you died, they would see your tombstone that you left. And usually it was little kids would leave all kinds of bad words on the tombstone. And, you know, pee pee. So, you know, here lies pee pee. She pooped. Something like that, right? But so, think about what has happened here. We have enriched the world. My progress through the game, I've played, I've died. I've left a permanent mark on the game. The world is now different. What if in World of Warcraft, when you failed a raid, you could never do that raid again, and the world itself was different? You didn't save the city. That city's gone for everybody. Now, we're not quite there yet with technology, because World of Warcraft, the only reason it has such a rich story is that they write the entire story. It's not like I can make the story substantially different, or really different at all in most cases. I'm just going through the same pace as everyone else is going through. There is a game called Dwarf Fortress. Oh, people know what it is now. We gotta watch out. The trouble. most important thing about Dwarf Fortress, I think, is not the procedural content generation, because we're not quite there yet. It's not, good. It is really good. It's the fact that this is a game where I play out my whole fortress, and the point is to lose. The point is that my fortress will eventually fall. Someday those dwarves will live too damn deep. Something will come up and kill us all. You never know. But when that last dwarf dies, weeping bitterly and alone, having barricaded himself into the last bastion of safety, surrounded by his dead cats, <laughs> and then he finally starves to death, and you start the game over, you walk into that exact same fortress. You can take that game and give it to someone else, and they will live in the world that you created. Imagine an MMO like that. Old MMOs were like that. MUDs, if you were playing a MUD, you would write the story for the rooms you were going through. Your body was there forever until something ate it. And your stuff was still there. You write something on the wall, it is there for anyone to see. And very few MMOs do anything like that, and I think it's really a shame. So, in conclusion, on this first short panel, MMORPG is an absolutely useless term, and you should never use it to describe a game. It is so generic, it is so pointless, it doesn't mean anything. At best, it's going to mean wow to most people. Or you'll be a pedant, and you'll, you'll actually mean, I have a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. I know what all those words mean, and I am totally serious. My game is that. No one else is going to in any way understand what you just said to them. Genrefication is probably not just restricting creativity, it is one of the biggest problems in the game industry today. Indie games are the few areas where we're seeing people break away from that, and why don't I just make an FPS where instead of shooting people, I build giant penises into the sky? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at gaming history, right, the old arcade games, like you'll see in the classic arcade upstairs, right, what genre, you know, there were some genres like Space Invaders, you know, the you know, shoot 'em ups but most of the games defied genre. It was like, what, what genre is Zookeeper? Zookeeper. It's like, it's, you know, what genre is Root Beer Taffer? Uh, Root Beer Taffer, you know? They didn't have genres. Everyone just made a video game. Then there were, there were no rules, no restrictions. The early PC games were like that up until the 90s. You know, what, what genre was Mule? Mule? Now, no. I could make up a genre. I could list all the mechanics in the game, like we started to with World of Warcraft, until we got all the mechanics wrong and we skipped all the ones that actually mattered. And finally, there could be awesome MMORPGs the term I just said we shouldn't use. We could have these massive interactive spaces. We could have entire worlds online, and we don't. MMOs need to grow up and be what they were truly born to be. <laughs> Thank you.